Hello, everybody. How's everybody today? Well, we're here to say our farewell, goodbyes, or whatever you want to call it, Mr. Jim Ottinger today on his retirement. He's been here, I've been knowing him for about 50 years. Right, Jim? Just a little over 50 now. Me and Billy Gadot have been knowing him for at least 50 years. So that tell you how old he is. Well, I'm telling him long himself now, ain't it? Yes. That's, that's, that's bad. That's bad. But anyway, we want to get this uh, retirement ceremony started. The microphone's not working. You ain't either, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no. We want to get this started. Our first speaker today will be Mr. Shaw Blackman, our state representative. He has a few words to say to Jim before he has to go back to work. It ain't gonna. It ain't gonna speak out. Just want to say because we can record it. That's all. It's on. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's certainly an honor and a, a really my privilege to be here today. And um, when I got the email from Miss Anna and it said that after 38 years that Jim was retiring, I thought, well, did he start when he was 10 or 12 years old? Because not only does he look young, but they both have. You know, they both do, and then they have all this energy to go along with it. Um, first got to meet them in the neighborhood and you couldn't have better neighbors and to know the Ottingers is to, to love them and so I just just here really do to add um, my congratulations and my thank you uh, Jim for your service and we've got something a little more official coming later on but um, just want to thank you for your contribution to our national security and to our nation's security and thank you to all of you for the same uh, God bless you and uh, happy holidays. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't sit back down. Don't sit back down. Sit on my back. All right. All right. I needed Mr. Blackman to do his thing, so he had to leave. But now we have invocation by Mr. Billy to get on. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all hold it down now. Hold it down. Henry, it's recording. Uh, Jim, I didn't realize you had so many friends. <laughs> but this speaks well of you, Jim. The attendance here today, and uh, this is really a blessing. And as Henry has already mentioned, actually Henry and Jim and I were in the 2955th CLSS together, and many, many, many years ago, I first met Jim out at Luke Air Force Base, Arizona. We recruited him to the CLSS. He came to Robbins and got out and has done quite well for himself. And that's what brought him here. But it's been my privilege to know Jim all these years and Anna. And uh, right now, I would ask that we all bow our heads. If you would, please, and let's ask, ask God's blessings upon today. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your many blessings and for the privilege to live in the greatest nation on earth. We thank you for the opportunities and experiences we have shared over the years as we have worked together as one team to serve our country and the United States Air Force. We thank you especially today for the privilege of knowing and working with Jim Ottinger for all these years. On this day we gather together to celebrate and to honor him as he retires after 38 years of dedicated service to his country. We ask you to bless them, dear God, he and his devoted wife, Anna, as they continue life together and in all their future endeavors. We pray that you will continue to keep and guide them all the days of their lives. Father, I personally thank you for allowing me to have known Jim all these years and to be able to call him my friend. May we always remember that life is precious and that everyone who comes into our lives is for a reason and for a purpose. We ask now that you would bless the food and bless our time together today. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bill. All right. Since everybody started eating, except me, um, we'll bring on the next speaker. The next speaker will be the uh, director of the 559th AMX Squadron, Mr. Um, Henry Griffin. So, so hold on. I got to get set up here. So, Jim, uh, it, thank you. What a privilege it is to uh, uh, speak uh, at your retirement. Uh, so, several weeks ago, uh, 
sat down with Jim. I said, okay, so I first met you in EMXG, but that was for a very short time, and then for the last year and a half we've worked together. So I said, uh, you got you to gotta help me with, uh, you know, bio of your career. So he provided me with some information, and what, what I encourage you to do is as you listen, as I walk through some of the things and accomplishments that uh, Jim has uh, had over his career, just think about the progression from, of responsibility and uh, making his way up to LRDP chief and, and C5. So, so it's your day, Jim. We celebrate you. We celebrate... Uh, your dedication of service for 38 years to this great nation, both from a military standpoint and from a civilian standpoint. So I'll tell you from my perspective, Jim's always been a team player. Uh, so let me just highlight some of uh, Jim's uh, uh, military career. He started uh, by enlisting in the U.S. Air Force in uh, 1979 at the age of 19. 19. 19 years old. Hey, <laughs> so, so he spent three years at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona, F-15 Structural Repair. He then later transferred to Depot Field Team here at Robbins as uh, Mr. Uh, Good. Good. How should I pronounce it? Billy. Billy. <laughs> Mr. Billy. All right. Uh, and so while he was stationed here at Robbins uh, in, uh, in, in that depot field team for approximately two and a half years, you had some adventures. You, you traveled all across the U.S. and to England and Canada uh, repairing damaged F-15s and C-141 aircraft. And uh, so Mr. Billy, uh, who, who gave the invocation, and, and, and we know the friendship that, uh, that you have with him, uh, was your first supervisor, I think, in the military, and and boy, all those years that y'all maintained that relationship—that's uh, that's a testament to your friendship. Surely is. You wouldn't let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work. So in October of '85, Jim began the transition from military to civilian life. So as we trans. Uh, uh, do that transition into Jim's uh, civilian career, he started in CMXG. Uh, and he was working on F-15 wings, uh, ramps, and pylons. In three years, he advanced to first-line supervisor. That's, that's pretty quick. Then, uh, over the 12 years that Jim was in CMXG, he supervised F-15 inlet ramp, horizontal stab shop, C-141 cowling shop. He then went on to supervise the manufacturing shop where he was promoted to WS-12, leading the manufacturing process. So some of the things that Jim was responsible for while there, reverse engineering, developing templates and molds. But the key about all of that is all of those parts that you manufactured they, they uh, provided mission support all across the world for the United States Air Force. In 2000, Jim received his associate degree in applied science. So as a result from that, he was able to take that educational experience and move into CMXG scheduling and planning office. In 2001, Jim was asked to be a part of the C-5 Tiger team. So with those responsibilities, he was reviewing C-5 issues all across the command. Later in the year, he joined the C-5 planning office. And uh, in that office, he was responsible for the uh, MRRB planning, which, uh, so if you kind of translate that, Air Force, I mean aircraft requirements, and, and the budget for C-5. In 2007, he was selected as the EMXG GS-12 Group 2 Program Manager. That's when I first uh, uh, met Jim. In 2009, Jim returned to AMXG as the C-17 Deputy Wissett Chief. In 2010, 
Jim was promoted to the C-17 WSIG chief. In 2013, Jim was assigned to the 558th as the consolidated flight chief. Wasn't there long before you moved back to C-5 in the present position that you have now as LRDP chief. So let me just say, as LRDP chief and my association with Jim, he's led that team with excellence. He's fulfilled the, every task that I've asked him to do. He set the stage for the network going from 220 to 185 to 143. Set the stage for Global Hawk. And I'll just call it Project X. <laughs> set the stage for Project X. family. There's no question in my mind that Jim is a, is a, is a family man and a man of faith. I, I don't have to read that on a piece of paper. I know that from talking with him. The, uh, the early morning talks when you come by. And if you don't come by, I see you. I say, why don't you come by and see this morning? <laughs> so, with family, in 1984, Jim married his bride, Anna. And they've been married for over 33 years now. That's cause enough to celebrate right there, marriage of 33 years. So you, you're an amazing woman to put up with. Amen. So Anna, what I'll tell you from what he's told me, and this wasn't in anything he scripted, it's because I know that his, he credits you with all his success and his accomplishments. I know he, he loves you uh, deeply. And Jim's two sons, Jeremy, who's with us here today, and James Robert, who lives in New Jersey, he couldn't be with us here today. So, Jim, I'm going to end just on a personal note uh, of my own. I thank you for your dedication to the United States of America. I thank you. For the year and a half that you and I have worked together, I thank you for the trust, faithfulness, and execution of tasks, and carrying out the C-5 mission. I thank you for doing that. So, as I said, I'll miss those early morning talks when you stop by. Yeah, I mean, just uh, random things that you'd talk about. You didn't but the festival too. Yeah, oh, they were good. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, Jim, God bless you on this new journey and chapter in your life. I pray that God's favor will be on you and your family. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thanks. Say it. No, you can trash that. That was about to jump. All right. Now we have. It's not a mic, so you can hear. It's a mic just for recording. All right. So that's why y'all keep saying that, especially John Daniels. You won't hear nothing come out of this mic today. You just out of my mouth. All right. <laughs> Jim, would you step up here, please? Uh, Mr. Darrell Hatcher was responsible for us for not having a speaker system for this. <laughs> Sound good to me? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna we're going to present um, Jim with the uh, certificate and the flag that was flown. It says, let it be known to all who read the certificate that James D. Auditor Jr., was presented this flag by the men and women of the 559th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron, Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia, in honor of his retirement after 30, what you said, 38? 38. Ah, uh, yeah, this flag say 37, okay. <laughs> after 38 years of dedicated service to, to our nation, we salute you for a job well done. This flag was flown over Afghanistan and Iraq aboard C-5B, 870030 on 25th December 2009. 
while supporting Operation Enduring Freedom in Iraq for, for um, freedom. Now we would like to present the certificate of service from the United States Air Force. This, this is to recognize James D. Ottinger Jr. for 30, 38 years of faithful and devoted federal service on the occasion of retirement from employment with the United States Air Force, given this 30th day of November, 2017. Certificate of appreciation from the United States Air Force and grateful appreciation. The United States Air Force presents this certificate of recognition to Anna Marie Ottinger for the commitment and numerous contributions that you made positive impact to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gives, which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service given this 30th day of November 2017. We also want to thank you for putting up with him for this long. <laughs> That's a true statement. <laughs> All right, and stay with you. Stay right. Oh, oh. See what you're doing with your parts. <laughs> this is a. Uh, this is his retirement again. We'd like for Anna to pin it on him. I'd like her to stick him with it, but. This is for you, a presentation from us as a squadron. All right. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for putting up with him. Miss Avis? Yeah, Miss Avis. Miss Avis? Yeah, I would like to go ahead. I would, I'd, I would just like to take a minute just to go ahead and recognize Ms. Avis. Um, her husband, uh, Roy Scott, was a, a mentor and a father to me over the years when uh, Anna was over in Iraq and, and stuff like that. So she's, she's kind of like my mother. Even though my mother's passed away, uh, Avis has been my mother for many, many years. Um, along with Roy being basically my father. So um, I'd like to give you these smiles. Thank you. Now the fun starts. <laughs> first person speaker, I'd like to come up, call up with Mr. Randy Evans. All right, Henry, let me have your coat. No! <laughs> All right, so um, looking around the room, uh, it's packed, and um, you know, I'm amazed by it, to be honest with you. When I think about my future retirement, hopefully it ain't too far off, but I'll probably fill up one or two of these booths, and hopefully Jim and Anna is one of them, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to pick up Henry. Uh, Mr. Griffin went over his background, his whole career. So, but I want to pick up where, where I met Jim and, and our relationship. 
and it was back in 2002, I think it was when you first came into the C5 organization. I was in planning organization. Jim came into the planning organization. We worked side by side in that organization and on, in that particular office, and we created a great friendship together, okay? So, so much, now, not only in the work environment, but outside as well. Um, what I noticed about Jim, he wasn't in a leadership role at that time, but he was a leader. Uh, it didn't matter if he was a supervisor or not. Um, he was a, a co-worker just like myself in that organization, but, but he was leading people even though he didn't have the supervisor role. So that, that won't ever be able to be taken away from him, even when he steps outside in his private life. And he has a business on the side, and we'll get to that in a moment. But, but that's where he, he's always been a leader, and I've seen that throughout his whole career, everything we've done. And, and anybody that knows Jim knows that, that he's like a dog with a bone when he gets something, right? When, when he started his business, okay, everybody knows this because he was all about that business, giving out the flowers, the cards, he's gonna be successful in it, he's successful in everything he does. You're 57, right? Yes, sir. I'm 57 years of age as well. I don't see retirement in my future. He's got a retirement, okay? A lot to be said for that. But Correct? Thank you. Right? Yes. So, 57, and, and to be honest with you, you know, with that dog with a bone I spoke up a few years ago, and he's been ribbed about this a little bit, but that's okay. He talked about retirement at 52, 53 years of age. Who's even thinking about doing that, okay? But he, he's successful, and he doesn't let anything go. He had that on his mind several years ago, and then he made the planning, he made it happen. And at 57 years of age, he's getting out of all his Air Force bases. Um, it helps to be a fan. Yeah, it doesn't have to. <laughs> so, so we, I told you that we work together. He, Jim has made a difference in my life, it's in my career, and also my personal life. And I would uh, reference Anna as well. Jim refers to her as Miss Anna a lot, so I'm going to refer to you as Miss Anna as well. So, so when Jim was working with me, we were peers. He was a planner. I was a peer, a uh, planner as well. The planning chief position became available. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm going to tell them, okay? <laughs> so what he did when that planning chief position became available, he went to leadership. Everybody respected Jim because he had that background, okay? Uh, Mr. Griffin told you about all those supervisor roles. Becoming a supervisor in three years, being at Robbins Air Force Base, it took me a lot longer. But, but Jim went to leadership, and he basically told them that if you don't put Randy in that position, I'm lateraling out of that office, okay? So with that being said, I, and, and this is my theory, I think the only reason I got that position is because they didn't want to lose Jim, okay? No. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, we, we had an outside relationship as well. Our Jeremy and uh, Jim, myself and my boys, we, we went to a Falcon game. Uh, I've, actually, I've actually went bowling with uh, Jim and Miss Anna and a, and a group of uh, person, people, uh, co-workers and so, and so forth. I think um, we even took Caleb down to uh, Disney, didn't we? We did. They took Caleb, my younger son, to Disney World with them. Uh, Miss, Miss Anna, she, she, uh, she was a nurse at a nurse's hospital. Uh, they they uh, worked with your wife. Oh, uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but that's okay. That's no. okay. But, but anyhow, so uh, we play racquetball together mm -hmm. right now. I'm going to tell you a story. I told you Jim liked to be successful in everything. Well, when he, when, I don't even know how we ended up playing racquetball, but when we went with the racquetball courts, well, I go to the uh, gym at the counter and I get me one of them old rackets, right? And, uh, and the goggles, right? Well, Jim, he, he didn't tell me he played in the military, so when he shows up, he's got all kind of gear, got his own bag, this nice racket, his own goggles. So he beat up on me for uh, several weeks there in that racquetball court, uh, gave me some lessons, okay? And then he started sharing little tricks, what he was doing, okay? But he always just gave me a little bit, and John's smiling over there because he's with, he, John yeah. was there too. So, so uh, what he was doing was he just gave me just enough to keep it competitive, but not enough to let me win, okay? <laughs> and uh, the last thing I recall is, uh, and those goggles get pretty sweaty, right? Well, I, mean, I can't hardly see out of those goggles, you know, and I'm playing this guy that played in the military. Well, towards the end of our uh, racquetball career, he said, you might want to use this for your goggles that keeps them from steaming up. Well, I was wondering, well, how that goggle wasn't steaming up, right? So, uh, you know, when I look around the room, get real quick, when I look around the room and I look at all these folks, I see a lot of folks that came out and they were retired. 
future people in this league, I know you're getting out of here. Congratulations to you. But but how many people have retired? How many people are in here that have retired? I know it got to be more than that. Several, okay? So, so I, I, I saw four or five hands. How many people want to retire? <laughs> ah, okay, here we go. I knew that was coming. So, uh, so it is a, a testament to all the folks that are here. Jim, um, he... He, he uh, I'm gonna, I want to get this right, okay? So, he came to me, he approached me uh, about going out on blind date. I was a single fellow, okay? And, uh, and he approached me about going out on this blind date with him and his wife. And, I, you know, when I wasn't really interested, okay? I've heard about these blind dates. I wasn't interested in blind date at all. Okay, and I told you how he was, that dog with the bone. He didn't give up. He came, every time he came back to me, he would tell me something great about this person. What a wonderful person she is. Finally, the third time he came to me, I said, Jim, have you met this lady? He said, no, but he said, I trust Anna. And Anna, Anna's a good judge of character. And when she tells me she's got good character, you can thank God. He's going to be spot on. Okay? So, bottom line, we went out, we went out on this, uh, to this restaurant on this blind date. Um, Jim tells me it's just going to be myself, Anna, and him, and, and uh, this, this lovely young lady, right? So a day before, he says, well, you know, I told you I had reservations. Well, the day before, he said, well, the, the lovely young lady is going to bring some people with her. And, um, and I'm like, okay. And he said, well, I got your back. I'm going to be there, you know, if it goes south. Well, as it turns out, the lovely young lady, she, uh, she, she was sort of not – too keen on going on a blind date as well. So she brought an entourage. When I say an entourage, I mean it. I, I call it her posse, right? <laughs> so so it was a single door coming in this restaurant and, and, and I see one by one coming through and I'm, I'm thinking, and finally this, this beautiful young lady, I knew she wasn't gonna be interested in me because she was gorgeous, right? So uh, anyhow, I told Jim when he was asking me all this time about this uh, this young lady that he wanted to induce me. And I could say young, I was 45, okay? When you get 57 like I am, you talk about 45 like it was young, okay? So, but anyhow, when uh, this lovely young lady came in, uh, I told Jen prior, I said, well, if nothing else, I go out and it can be a friend. That's right. Well, as it turns out, y'all know, young, uh, young, lovely lady, not interested in me, but we did, we did have that friendship. And uh, she's my best friend today, and it's my wife, my yeah. With that being said, I always tell Anna, I always tell her, every time I tell her, and I told you when I walked in, and I tell her, thank you, and I appreciate it. You know, she said, Anna was telling Jim, good judge of character, right? And that he said, he said that Anna was a good judge of character. Well, she was a good judge of character when she selected you as her soulmate, brother. And uh, I've enjoyed working with you over the years. I'm going to miss you. We shared a lot of stories together. When I was building my home, when he was building his barn, we talked about family, okay? We talked about our kids, our children. Jeremy, you came on about the same time my son did. We were so happy to see you guys get out Robbins Air Force Base, and I'm happy to be about it, okay? Uh, I wish I... I, I got a zillion things I'd like to say to him, but I'm drawing a blank. I should have wrote it down right now. What do you think? But, but anyhow, I thank you so much. Okay. Uh, with that being said, I would like to Doug. Doug Sawyer. Doug Sawyer. Doug Sawyer. Your wishes are up to you. Oh. <laughs> All right, Doug, bring it on up. <laughs> Hey, and have something good to say to you. I'm still safe, but he has not spoke yet, so I'm still safe. Hey, and we don't allow midgets to speak in here. <laughs> Jim, good job. No, I'm just kidding. Jim Ottinger, I first met you in Chicago when we went to TDY in Chicago. I thought, well, that guy's crazy. And then I, you went to somewhere else. I guess Emory did your whole resume there. Came back to C5. I got the supervisor. And I thought, he's pretty cool. And then Jim started coming by my office in the mornings. And I'll tell you, I don't think you understand how much I appreciate you coming by in the mornings and offering your advice on being a supervisor. And I do appreciate that. And I won't forget. So, hold this. So, we got you something. We want to give you this flag. There's more. Hold on. All right. We got you these certificates. 
And what we have here is this flag that's in this box was actually flown on 009. It was flown on November 7, 2017, <coughs> excuse me, for 2.6 hours. We have the name of the crew here. And the comments from the crew were it flew great, it was a functional, chest pro functional check profile complete, and it was sold. So that was the last flight of that plane. And we got you a certificate of appreciation from the entire WISIC. We will miss you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sit down, Doug. <laughs> Our next speaker will be Mr. Andrew Adam. Oh. Now it's going to start getting bad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to order second Thank you, Henry. My, my name's Andrew Ivey, but I bought Jen McCrine Tower in case he needed it. Thank you. <laughs> in case we pulled some tears out of him today. I first met Jim back in about 2005. It might have been a little bit earlier than that when I was a supervisor, but I really kept, got to know Jim back in 2005. We came on his plan trainings back in the day. I think we were like GS5s, you know, way down here. So Baby planners. Baby planners. <laughs> These calls. Now, back in the day, the planning office wasn't too good about really trying to train anybody because everybody had their own little click and they wouldn't train anybody. I know Walt remembers a lot of that back in the day, but there, were the, there was a few of y'all that would and Jim was one of them. So what Jim and I started on, he pulled me into what we call the MRRB back in the day. And he started training me all that. We learned how to trend and, and do hours for that. We had to go to the, what they call the bloodlettings in the day. It's back at the MRB board review. Remember that? And that was a lot of fun. So we had to convince people that we we needed more money, and that's that was right. hard to do. That was hard to do. And what? Put the mic up, Put the mic up, All right. All right. So anyway, I'm not I'm not going to be here too long for a long speech. I just want to tell Jim that I appreciate it. All right. Love you like a brother, buddy. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. And you can't leave without a plane on a stick. <laughs> Playing on a stick. So we got this uh, C5 here. <clears throat> Let me get my glasses on because I can't see good anymore. But it goes to congratulations, James D. Ottinger, on your retirement of 38 years. With sincere gratitude, we, we thank you for the assistance, guidance, and outstanding leadership you provide to our C5 team. So, There you go. Thank you. Sir. And uh, also from all the planning team out there in the audience, past and present, we also appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank also, you so uh, Christy Drew did a lot of special work involved with this, getting a lot of this stuff done. I'd like to thank her too as well. Thank you, Mr. Big hit. Big head to the floor. <laughs> Who's giving this thing? Who's giving which side? This one? Mr. Forbes. Our next presenter will be Mr. Randy Ford. Whoa. <laughs> Randy. Uh, Randy Ford. Give his jacket back to him now he's speaking. Ha <laughs> ha! Good about saying you. No. Speaking up, I couldn't hear you, man. I'm no. cheek melt. <laughs> I probably won't need that. You don't need it, I guess. All right, all right go ahead. It's more they fancy. always call me a loud mouth anyway. I don't need a. Mm -hmm. You need it. Speaking, speaking, to, it. speaking to it. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Speaking to the work? Yes. Hello. We want to make sure we hear some nice words. Speaking to it. They want to hear some nice words? Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did they bring me up here? I know that's right. <laughs> I, <know that's laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, he's in trouble now. Now's sure. the time to start bringing out my napkin. Yeah. I, I met Jim years ago. It, it wasn't uh, as, as long ago as Henry oh. and, his, and his buddy. But I met him, uh, what, 25 years ago? At least. Yeah. We were all in the uh, wing shop, in the uh, F-15 wing shop in CMA. It was uh, MAN back then. 
and we went, uh, we took over the uh, wing shop and it went from 48 people to 489 people in nine months. It went from uh, one section chief and three first lines to three sec section chiefs and 15 first lines in that same period. And you got to understand back in that time, uh, it wasn't like it is now. If you can think about uh, typewriters, no computers. If you can think about uh, carbon paper and a mimeograph machine and somebody having to develop all that paperwork that we got today that we run through a computer manually, that's what we went through. And about each week we were splitting up crews and, and picking up people. And I remember there as we were making the first line, Jim was one of the first bunch, him and J.D. White. Yes, I remember. You know, so once we survived that and lived in that environment for about three years, we knew that there wasn't anything else on base that they could throw at us that we couldn't do. That's right. So that he was he was forged in fire and then they kept pushing him in the fire every time after that because you know, he's been in some of the hottest places where they were standing up things and getting things ready. So, if this thing works, we got an item here that is a, is a rare thing. At one time you could get one of these fairly easy, but now it takes a lot. Matter of fact, we don't make these anymore. Officially, there are not even, there's none available and it can't be done. This is a Georgia made from a C5 windshield. So it's uh, James Audra 1979 to 2017. Congratulations on your 38 years. A time loop back with admiration. A time loop forward with anticipation. Best wishes for a long and happy retirement from your family at Robbins Air Force Base. So. We're honored to give you that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it so much. Well, we got one more for you. All right. Oh, you can start crying. Okay. Emory, you want to go back up? What you do with your crying towel? I got it right. You, you got a hand in now. I got it. All right. <laughs> All right, Jim, this, this, this is not much. It, it is a book, uh, but it's a book that I bought uh, a number of years ago when I was in EMXG. And uh, it's uh, Leadership Pr uh, Promises for Every Day by John Maxwell. So if you're familiar with John Maxwell, he's written many, many books uh, about leadership, and he comes from a spiritual uh, perspective. And... Uh, so I found a, a lot of uh, comfort uh, in reading the, the daily chapters, and I just wanted to share that well, with you, you and, uh, and you, uh, you know, have that maybe as a devotion or, yeah. or yes, thank you, sir. anyway. Thank you very much. You know, I'm wondering why he's giving you something that you can't even read. That's too strange. Anyway. But it's your time. Okay. okay. Is there anyone else would like to? Frank, come on, on Frank. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, there's a few other. I think like Leo wants to say something too. Anybody else want to say something to us? Everybody got three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. <laughs> my name is Frank Zahiri. I met Jim Ottinger just a year ago. That's a. I'm disappointed that he's. I'm maybe the only one that's disappointed that he's retiring. <laughs> one of my best projects, actually, he is sponsored and he executed to perfection. I run, the te I run and support the technology development here at Robbins Air Force Base. And I also collaborate across all ALCs and the, and the Department of Defense. I usually go out there, identify requirements, try to get People who have right commitment and right attitude, and if they don't, I try to make sure I get them that right commitment and attitude and build it up. I come to meet Jim Ottinger. He has both of them on the fly. I had a technology project that we got funded through OSD for voice-enabled point-of-maintenance data collection. Jim Ottinger took that on. 
and took it to success. With that, Jim, OSD, in a, their appreciation, Office of Secretary of Defense sent a certificate to Jim Ottinger as a voice of the customer on the voice inspection maintenance system VIMS team in recognition of significant contribution supporting excellence in defense manufacturing technology signed by Assistant Secretary of Defense for in the Enterprise Management and Technology, Greg Kelchestein. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Leo, you want to come up? No. <laughs> How y'all doing? Everybody know Leo? Now, I don't know if anybody don't know this guy here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've been <laughs> So I've been knowing Jim since he came to C seventeens back in I think two thousand nine. Yes. Um Kenny Bates had became um, the Wissick Chief. He was the Deputy Wissick Chief and I was um, FLS Chief. So when he came, I was like, who in the world is this guy here? Um, <laughs> after about 20 minutes of conversation, I knew he didn't know too much about C7 thing. <laughs> so um, through the years, me and Jim used to, every morning, used to take a stroll around about six, by about six o'clock, 6.30 around, between 82 and 83 every morning. And uh, that was our time together. But there was rumors of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Buddy, terrible. Yeah, it was. But the thing was is that we bounced off each other. I learned a lot from Jim on what I didn't know from the supervisor and also on um, how the personnel system worked. What Jim learned from me was C-17s. The ins and out of production, and um, it was um, it's kind of comical now, but if you think about it, it was me and Jim versus production, and it really was like that. It was black man and raw band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. The another thing is that y'all don't know is this is Jim's second retirement. Oh, uh, did you have to bring that up? <laughs> second retirement. The first retirement I did. <laughs> so I, when this time I said, you ain't getting no gift for me. You got that last time. <laughs> but one thing I can say, when Jim, um, when I heard Jim was coming back to be the flight chief of CSF as I was standing it up, I was, I was very happy because I had somebody now I can walk around 125 with now <laughs> instead of 83, 81 8 through 83. So when Jim had the opportunity to get out, it, it, I still, we still seeing each other every day, and we talk. So that was a good thing because one thing you can, I can say, is the friendship. It was outside of just the work. It was also on how to grow as a manager. Um, one good thing I can tell you about Jim, he said, is always gonna ever stick with me. He said, is 10% on what you do and it's 90% on how you act, no matter what the situation is. And we've been put in a lot of situations I wanted to flip-flop it around. <laughs> but I had that little voice in the back of my head to say, uh -uh. it's how, you, how it's perceived and how it's it received. And that's a, a, to me, I think that's one of the things that's stuck with me the whole time. Now, Jim, I know you're getting ready to get out the door, but I got you, I still got the, um, you st I got the bat phone, you just got to be an answer. There you go. So, How about answering it? I'm looking for that electrician still. Uh, okay. Well, well, I got to get him that. But like I say, Jim's been, um, to me, he's been a great leader, supervisor, and also a mentor. And that's one of the good things, quality he had. Um, I never really seen Jim get too out of, I mean, acting crazy. I did all that. <laughs> so. That's why I said we was good. I don't know how many times we got kicked out of Double Day office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I say, Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, like I say, prayers to you on your new adventure. And um, anything you need, just call the back phone. All right, bro. I got you. Thank you. <laughs>
got it? You the MC. And a good one at that. Anybody else want to say anything? Scott. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Already um, A lot of people said a lot of nice things, and I really do appreciate that. And Buddy? <laughs> Buddy's special. <laughs> we keep him over there in the, in the corner. In any case, there, there's so many people. I, I, I couldn't begin to go ahead and comment on the folks here and, and my relationships and my and my friendships with them um, there's so many m many things to talk about you know Randy um, I remember Randy and CMXG and uh, him and Robert Nutt and I had saw Robert Nutt a couple, a couple months ago uh, mentors uh, uh, when you when you talk about strict first-line supervisors those guys were it and uh, I grew up underneath that and I was taught many many things uh, from Randy and Robert so I appreciate that so much Randy you giving me that um, I've learned so many things about management you know down to being um, military micromanaging down to releasing <coughs> releasing that um, way of managing to the new way that I manage now which is kind of stay away when people know what they're doing right? like Andy Ivy there's there's no there's no having to manage Andy Ivy and his team. I want to go ahead and say that that's the finest planning team that you have on Rom's Air Force Base right now. Okay. And then the testament is to bringing in all that extra workload. Beside Buddy, um, bringing in <laughs> all that all that workload and being placed on the, on this planning team with no additional people and a reduction of people. You talk about um, a, a great team. You got a great team, and Andy, you're a great guy. And uh, the best thing I could have done is to go ahead and not, not try to go ahead and, and, and get in your way. So you made it easy, um, and therefore I didn't have to do much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Leo, I appreciate those words. Uh, truly a, a friend who helped me through. Uh, I was just a, a planner. And I started, like Randy said, we were used to being thrown into situations. So I had to learn not only planning, scheduling, uh, FLSs, tool cribs. Bruce Newman was here uh, earlier today. Uh, some some great people, and and it really served me well to go ahead and, and not be micromanager because I knew nothing. Some will say he still doesn't know that. <laughs> but but uh, I've learned a lot and met a lot of good friends and uh, I am truly going to go ahead and miss this Air Force 38 years of uh, service um, I can remember the first day I got the Luke Air Force Base to now you know when you retire you go through those things all those things all those people and uh, yesterday morning this morning one o'clock in the morning I start thinking about what it is I want to say and the thank yous to each individual but I could never I, I would take hours okay so miss susan my my deputy director over c17 we still have a relationship going on where we, we go places and stuff and susan you help me with the part thank you so much and then i thank you i do want to go ahead and thank my wife i've asked i've asked lord to get through this so Appreciate you. In any case, that's really all I have to say.
just got a few comments to make about the old guy here. Like you said before, I've been knowing him a long time. We've been friends a long time. He came back to work and they, they moved him next door to me. What did they do that for? <laughs> He come to my office, he want to borrow paper. He want to do this and do this. And I tell him, you outrank me, so what? Well, you should be helping me. And he just said, he just looked at me and walked out, you know, like I'm crazy. Which I am anyway. But, Jim, I appreciate being, knowing you. I appreciate being, letting you teach me things. And we work together, and I appreciate that. And I thank you. And I will get to the barn again. Yes, sir. You see how it is. I bring my wife this time. Yes. All right? Uh, it, um, anything anybody else wants to say before I dismiss him? All right, nobody? You dismiss. Sit down. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, I thank everybody for coming to show you support for Jim and everybody have a safe trip back home. Or oh, to work in y'all kids. Go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work. And if you want some cake, some cake in the back. All right, thank you.